Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. I'm your host, Jerron Harrington, back to hit you with another video. And today, every Tuesday, as always, we are back with another Chainsaw Man episode review. This week, episode 11, titled Mission Start Transcription, Sakusen Kaishi. Um, this is the precursor to the season one finale just got confirmation that episode 12 next week will be the final episode of season one and like i said before this season one was going to go around 12 to 13 episodes at least that's what it was estimated at the beginning so now we have the final confirmation it will be 12 episodes now, as far as what the future will be, there is no confirmation on season two. I mean, not like there would be since we're just wrapping up season one. So we don't know when season two will come out. We don't know if uh, Chainsaw Man is going to be yearly. I would say that if they've done a, one of the few options that they could do, and this is what some anime studios do sometimes, is that... They record up to 24 episodes at a time and then they release the episodes in two sets of 12 or if they make 25 episodes then they may release it in 12 or 13 episodes the first go round, and then they release the other half at a later date and time. For example with the Spy Family anime that came out this year around March in the beginning of spring if you will. And they showed the first 12 episodes from March to April to May. The anime took a break around June, July, August, September, and didn't come back until this year in October. And we know that the final episode to end Spy Family Season 1 is going to be this coming weekend with episode 25. So again, if Chainsaw Man does go down that route, then it might be taking a break from the end of December and January, February, March. So it might be back in April. That's assuming if they've already recorded the 24 episodes and they're just releasing it in two halves. Or if this really is just the end of season one altogether, then that means we'll have to be expecting season two at a later date and time. Now, Studio Mappa is about to come out with the newest animes that they're working on as they've announced at Jump Festa. So you'll have Vinland Saga, you'll have the One Punch Man anime, I believe that's getting a continuation, along with Jujutsu Kaisen that was announced season two coming out in July of 2023. So I'm definitely looking forward to that as well. So if Chainsaw Man doesn't have anything already in the can ready to go, then there's a possibility that we might not see it until late next year at the earliest, or it might not be till 2024. Again, this is Studio Mappa we're talking about. Jujutsu Kaisen, even when it came out, I believe it's been almost two years now since the um, anime had any new episodes. There was the movie Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. So again, we just don't know what we're going to get between now and then. But anyway, for everyone just to keep posted next week's episode in short will be the final episode for a while until we get some news on anything else that's to come but anyway let's get into the review for episode 11 picking up where we left off we saw the surviving members of the special division 4 pretty much being joint with all of the other special divisions to make a new special division 4 which is going to be captained by Kishibe and will be under the control of Makima. So we finish up with the training for Denji and Power. They were able to get one hit in on Kishibe. So you see how big of growth they've had when it comes to their training. Now, you might think that just getting one hit isn't a big deal, but when you're dealing with someone like Kishibe and how skilled he is, 
The fact that they were able to progress to the point where they could get one hit on him in such a short amount of time shows how much they've grown in terms of their skill and in their overall fighting prowess and instinct. You could say this was their training arc of sorts, but unlike most other training arcs, it wasn't about just powering up the powers that they already have. It's about teaching them to fight more smarter, to be more strategic. If you notice with a character like Denji, even though he has the chainsaw power, you'll see him fighting with an axe or with some other melee weapon. And that's because the power, it can run out just as quickly as you can use it. So it's about being careful at all times. So keeping that into consideration, you do see the growth with power in Denji and even with Aki as he has to make a new contract and he comes in contact with the future devil. And we learn that future devil, it takes whatever it wants in terms of building its contract. But with Aki, after it peers into Aki's future to determine what the price will be, since Aki has a short future, the future devil decides that it will embody itself inside of Aki's right eye and basically live in it just so that it can see the future that awaits Aki. However, before it can tell Aki the future, Aki declines because for him, the future doesn't really matter. He doesn't have that long to live anyway, but as long as he can get vengeance on the gun devil, then that's basically all that matters. Also, we do get our first inkling that everything is not what it seems. Now, if you are a manga reader, you already know what we're going with this, but if you're not, we basically have a meeting between Kishibe as well as Makima. And Kishibe basically calls out Makima because of the attack that happened on the special divisions. And he basically alludes to the idea that Makima planned all of this, that she expected this to happen and that she's the one responsible because she's manipulating things to try to get more power. Makima says that she's just doing this for the sake of world peace. And Kishibe even says that if what she's doing is to protect mankind, to protect the humans, then he can overlook it. He doesn't really care. But if it's not, then he's going to have an issue. Now, Makima, she says she's doing this for the good of mankind, but Kishibe flat out calls her a liar. So you obviously see where he stands in regards to that situation. He does not trust her at all as you should but anyway other than that we do see the special division being grouped together for the first time and their first mission together is to go after the terrorists that attacked all of the special divisions to begin with kishibe even explains that if the mission doesn't go well the fourth division is getting scrapped and since it's mostly made up of non-human combatants all the non-human combatants would basically be hunted down and killed if the whole division gets scrubbed. So everyone's lives are pretty much on the line when it comes to the overall mission. So as we gear into the final battle, if you will, for season one, kind of the culmination of everything, we get introduced to our newest characters into the show. First, there's Shark Devil, who is basically a fiend, much like Power, and as his power suggests, he has the powers of a shark. Most notably, his head turns into a full-on shark that he can use to attack his enemies, along with the increased strength, speed, and all that good stuff that comes with these type of powers. But also, one thing of note is that he has the ability to swim in different surfaces. Now, if you're familiar with the swim swim fruit from One Piece, basically the double fruit that allows you to swim in like solid matter like earth or through walls or things of that sort then you kind of get an idea for what his powers will be and overall with these powers you really can relate them to one piece in a way in terms of how they work similar to devil fruits in the sense that they're unique they're special properties but minus the whole not being able to swim we also are introduced to the violence fiend who pretty much has the power of pure violence and he has hands that are ready for everyone. We then have the spider fiend, which is basically a female who has the body lower half of a spider, and she uses that to fight with. We then also get introduced to angel fiend, and angel fiend, for the most part, isn't really a combative type, but his powers come in the sense that if you touch him, 
he basically feeds off of your lifespan, so don't touch him at all. However, indirect touching is allowed. So for example, if you hand him an object, he touches the object that you're holding, then his powers won't affect you. It has to be contact from person to angel for it to have any real damage. And we also see what Aki's new powers allow him to do. And I would say it's kind of like Sharingan, but it's not. I say Sharingan because it has precognition, which is essentially what his right eye is now. He can see a little bit into the future, so he can see some things before it happens. So he has precognitive reflex. However, that's only with the eye, not with his actual body. So because of this, he basically has to train his body to really benefit from using the eye. To quote Rock Lee from Naruto a long time ago when he fought against Sasuke in the beginning of the tuning exams, your eyes mean nothing if your body cannot keep up with it. So it's basically one of those situations where Aki's body, his reflexes, his training, all that good stuff has to keep up with the power to be any way near effective. So we go into Special Division 4's first mission, that being the mission to hunt down the Katana terrorists along with the Snake terrorists who attacked the Special Divisions just a couple of weeks ago. And we also see Makima at work as she implores help from the other Yakuza members to basically aid in finding all the ones involved to go after them. And we see a little bit of Makima's dark side, especially with the fact that she removed the eyeballs of the head Yakuza's family members and threatened not to give them back unless he cooperated. So you're really starting to see more of that darkness within Makima, you know, I, I've said that compared to the manga, she was definitely a lot more cheerful and happy, but now you're kind of starting to see a little bit of that evil side of Makima, and it's only going to get more and more worse as the story continues. But anyway, the episode leads off on the cliffhanger as the special division come into contact with the terrorists, and we gear up for the final battle that will wrap up the end of season one. All in all, this was definitely a good episode, solid episode as always. And like I said, this anime definitely started strong and I've got the feeling it's gonna end strong. And my overall thoughts on season one, I'll give that when I do the 12th episode finale review next week. So I'll give my thoughts there. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's review of Chainsaw Man episode 11. Stay tuned next week as we go over episode 12 and the season 1 finale. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm J. Ron Harrington with Powercore Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.